channels here on the chart, all right. And so are the marking lights. Then what's wrong with them? Those lights don't seem to be in just the right place. They're both a bit out of position, according to this. Two light boys mean a safe channel between the world over. Safe between the world over doesn't go in these waters. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, scrabbling desperately for some semblance of sanity. Up front this week, according to numerous online sources, the official wall of denial around UFOs may have finally crumbled. Most of our viewers are likely familiar with the recent footage presented by the To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science, which is a private firm created by Blink-182 frontman Tom DeLonge. The footage shows an unidentified object being tracked by two Navy pilots and has caused quite a stir in the media and proven a sensation in the field of ufology as well, with some questioning the credibility of the footage and the possible financial motivation of the To The Stars Academy itself. Those opinions might soon change, however, due to a recent statement given to the Black Vault website. Official spokesman Joseph Gratisher from the Department of Naval Operations and Information Warfare verified the authenticity of the footage, being quoted as saying, The Navy designates the objects contained in these videos as Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, or UAPs. Gratisher stated that UAP is the preferred designation for any unauthorized or unidentified object that is seen operating in controlled military airspace. Gratisher went on to state that the footage was not meant to be released, but has since been deemed declassified. In response to the admission, the To The Stars Academy celebrated by spreading the news on Facebook, posting that it was another exciting day of progress for the To The Stars Academy and our community of supporters. For PNT's part, while we congratulate TTSA on their victory, we have to point out that while the statement may sound like the government is supporting the existence of extraterrestrial life, their actual definition of a UAP is far more broad and far more earthbound, enough to make this victory, in our eyes at least, a theoric one. From nautical nonsense to cryonic cows, our next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to Australia, where one cattle company is finding that the business of artificial insemination can be an explosive one indeed. According to an article by the Huffington Post and numerous online sources, the owners of Yarram Herd Services in Gippsland, Australia have quite the mess to clean up after 100 cylinders containing cryonically frozen bull semen exploded, sending their wiggly contents flying. The samples collected from prize-winning bulls and stored within the icy incubators until needed are actually a hot commodity within the ranching community with samples of semen or straws fetching upwards of $95. Officials have been unable to determine the cause of the explosion, stating that the most likely possibility was a buildup of pressure within the tanks, leading to a sudden and violent eruption. A local fire commander expressed frustration at the difficulty in putting out the blaze, calling it a unique challenge due to the lids of the canisters randomly popping off and causing the pressurized canisters to take flight, spewing a cacophony of calc semen over everything nearby. It took the firefighters more than two hours to contain the sizzling scene with the actual cause of the incident still under investigation. For PNT's part, while we must express our sympathies to the owners and farmers affected by the loss, we must salute those intrepid and unsung souls that had to clean up the after-effects of this bountiful bovine blow-up. We'll be back with the final part of our program in just a few minutes. But first, a word from our sponsor. Watching. 
doggone me scratchy tissues. They hurt my nose. They're driving me wild, wild, wild. Try Dotkin tissues. They're so gentle. No tissue is gentle enough for my tender skin. No skin's too tender for Dotkin. Women love the gentle softness of Dotkin tissues. Baby skin loves Dotkin too. And Dotkin tissues are stronger. They're more absorbent too. Dotkin gives you 400, not 300 tissues. No skin's too tender for doe skin. Buy doe skin tissue. Welcome back. And remember, the next time your nose is driving you wild, 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 nobody is softer than doe skin. For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, PNT is pleased to bring you a fascinating UFO report drawn from the MUFON database. Taken on September 17th of this year, the footage appears to show a large number of orange-colored lights moving swiftly across the skies over Godfrey, Illinois. Let's have a look at the footage. Where'd they come again? Well, is there anyone we can call one of these guys? Where'd it come? Well, they gotta get a hold of them. They gotta know. Nobody's fucking up. Oh my God. Lord help us. Can I get a hold of somebody?
So what were the objects that terrified an Illinois couple earlier this month? Let's run down the possibilities. As usual, say it with me now. We can rule out birds, clouds, stars, and most atmospheric phenomena such as meteors. We can also rule out lens flares, camera artifacts, and light from Venus reflecting off weather balloons filled with swamp gas. Wry remarks aside, balloons, whether party or weather, could easily be fitted with LED lighting and released en masse, perhaps at the conclusion of a party or a festival. Following this line of reasoning, PNT searched September event calendars for the entire state of Illinois, hoping to find an event that might produce such a display. The only two events that might have been a remote possibility were the Glendale Heights Oktoberfest, which ran from September 12th through the 22nd, and the Riot Fest in Chicago, which occurred on September 13th through the 15th. Two days too early to account for the sighting provided that aerial displays were even part of the festival at all. The final nail in the balloon hypothesis is the fact that the only event matching the date, the Glendale Oktoberfest, took place more than 130 miles to the southeast, far beyond the sight line of the witnesses. So, having eliminated balloons, and by extension fireworks, we can move on to the next likeliest possibility, flares. While flares could match the luminosity of the objects in the video, they could not easily move in formation the way that the light seemed to do, horizontally and at a fairly rapid pace. Flares drift according to the prevailing wind currents and the force of gravity, and would require careful timing to replicate these motions, even were the breezes cooperating. The final point against flares being the explanation is the abrupt vanishing of the objects, without the telltale plume of smoke that burning flares produce. So with flares fizzling out, we can turn our attention to our friend the drone. As is obvious to anyone with half a brain, drones could easily replicate the event, provided that the donors of a dozen or so drones outfitted with high-power LED lights decided to stage a simultaneous hoax which doesn't seem too terribly likely. The lack of noise on the audio track of the recording is also telling against drones, with the altitude of the lights apparently being low enough to hear the high-pitched whine that would have been caused by a drone's propellers. As we can hear, there's nothing other than the witness's frantic commentary. So, possible, but not terribly probable. That brings us to the possibility that the sighting could have been caused by aircraft, civilian, commercial, or military. As usual, PMT searched the area around the sighting for nearby airports or military installations. As we can see, there are no shortages of airports or a military presence. Without the exact location of the sighting for reference, it is impossible to determine the exact line of sight of the witnesses but it's safe to say that given the amount of traffic in the area, that these could have well been aircraft. But let's narrow it down a bit further. Small private planes acting in coordination could replicate the sighting, but as with drones, this is simply not practical and suffers from the same lack of noise. So, commercial aircraft then. While this does seem to be the obvious and rational explanation, it's leaving out one crucial fact, the sheer number and closeness of the objects. Commercial aircraft are very carefully managed according to the flight paths to avoid collisions, with enough of a time delay between each outgoing plane to ensure safety between the next. So in this case, the objects on the recording are far too close together to be commercial planes, but not to be military craft. There are numerous aircraft flown by the military that could account for the lights, but again the sheer number would seem to belie this possibility. First, again, is the lack of sound. Even a squadron of helicopters in stealth mode would make enough noise to have been picked up on the audio track. The reactions of the witness also seem to be out of proportion to a display of helicopters moving in formation, but then 
helicopters are usually not silent and vanish from sight at random. So test craft then? Given the close proximity of installations of all branches of the United States military, it's not a far stretch to peg this as a possibility, but it's also nearly impossible to prove. With the military being historically reluctant to provide details of their operations, we can't rule out this explanation, but neither can we confirm it. So, with few possibilities left, and even fewer leads to pursue, we must now turn to the boundless possibilities presented by the unknown. Is it possible that the objects that frightened two Illinois residents so badly that they resorted to prayer were exactly what they appear to be? Unknown craft skimming low over the landscape for unknown purposes. Where would such craft come from? While it's easy to leap right to extraterrestrials, there also exist alternate explanations that could be just as valid. What if the origin of these craft is right beside us, at all times, an alternate dimension intersecting with ours? What if the beings that exist there have stumbled across naturally occurring rifts between our realities, or, an even more chilling thought, gained the ability to create them? Ask yourself, were we to develop such technology, what would our first steps be? Likely, we would follow the dictates of common sense and existing NASA protocols, and send a series of probes to determine if the other side were habitable and inhabited. Is that what we're seeing happen with the UFOs that have been reported and recorded worldwide? Or perhaps a step deeper into the rabbit hole? Could these objects be not only interdimensional in nature, but also temporal? Could these hypothetical rifts between realities operate not only across space, but time as well? If this were the case, is it possible that we ourselves are observing from some future time? Or, an even more fascinating thought, from a time long past? But what are they hoping to learn? Are they simply observing, or perhaps are they manipulating events? And to what end? Fascinating questions that we may someday find the answers to, or perhaps find out that we already have. But whether or not the remarkable lights caught on tape by two terrified witnesses in Godfrey, Illinois, were a coordinated hoax, a display of secret military hardware celebrating Oktoberfest, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comment section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PMT presents your next portion of The Paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind. Because a closed one shuts out the truth. Civilized, did you say? He talks of Wayne and women as a prelude to the hunt. We barbarians know that it is after the chase and then only that man revels. Yeah, it does seem a bit like cocktails before breakfast. Of course, yes. You know this saying of the Ogandi chieftains. Hunt first the enemy, then the woman. That's the savage's idea everywhere. It is the natural instinct. What is woman? Even such a woman as this, until the blood is quickened by the kill. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you Americans. One passion builds upon another. Kill. Then love. When you have known that, you will have known ecstasy.